Now, mathematicians don't get too creative when it comes to symbols and definitions. Same is, here, uh, same is true here for this convention. Functions are often denoted by letters such as F or big F, G or big G and others, right? Functions start with F, so typically we just do F and then G comes next, um, nothing too creative. So if, a, if F is a function, then for each number X in its domain, the corresponding image in the range is designated by F of X. Right, and so that's read as f of x. And we refer to this f of x as either the value, or sometimes you may hear the word image. So for a function defined by y equals f of x, the variable x is called the independent variable because it can be assigned any number from the domain. Sometimes it's also called the argument of the function. And the variable y is called the dependent variable because its value depends on which x value you're using. So we're just going to run through these six um, examples here. Our function f of x is defined to be negative 3x squared plus 2x. We want to evaluate the following. All right, this first one, this is asking us to evaluate the function at x equals 3. All we have to do is plug 3 in wherever we have an x. And then we simplify. So 3 squared gives us 9 times negative 3 gives us negative 27. And then 2 times 3 gives us 6. So if we have negative 27 plus 6, we end up getting negative 21. Next one, this 3 is on the outside. So that is going to be affecting the way the function is behaving. So we need to do 3. And then wherever we have an f of x, we just plug this whole beast in right here. It gives us negative 3x squared plus 2x. And now we have to distribute this 3 over this addition. So we get 3 times negative 3x squared, which gives us negative 9x squared, plus then 3 times 2x, which gives us 6x. Next, <clears throat> we want to plug in negative x into the function f. So to do that, we're first going to take the function. Everywhere we have an x, we just put a couple parentheses. And inside the parentheses, we just put in negative x. And we have to be careful about the order of operations. So we need to take care of exponents before we take care of multiplication. Right. If you take negative x and you square it, you end up just getting regular x squared back out, and then you multiply by negative 3. And now, you, since you have 2 times negative x, you can take that negative out front, and we end up getting negative 3x squared minus 2x. So notice that this changed a lot of stuff in this equation. Over here, we're going to have a negative in front of the function. So we have negative, and then we replace f of x by how it's defined, negative 3x squared plus 2x. And just like we did in the second example, we distribute the negative. So negative 1 times negative 3x squared, negatives cancel out, leaving us with 3x squared. And then we have negative 1 times 2x, which gives us negative 2 these will become important later in this chapter where you put a negative either next to the x or right outside the function because if certain things happen then the function itself is fairly nice. Let's look at what happens when we plug x plus 3 into the function f. So just like we did for this example 
we're just going to rewrite everything with parentheses wherever there was an x up here. So our function is negative 3 times whatever we have here squared plus 2 times whatever we have there. And what we have, that what we want to plug in here is going to be x plus 3. This one, not too bad. We're just going to distribute that 2 over the addition. Over here, since we have a binomial, this x plus 3, we have to be careful when we square it. So over here, we're just going to do a little scratch work. We have to FOIL. All right, so this x plus 3 squared really means we take x plus 3 times x plus 3. And in a sense, we do a double distribution. So first we take this x and we distribute to this x plus 3 on the right. We get x squared plus 3x. Then we take this 3 and distribute it into the x plus 3 on the right. And then we go ahead and combine like terms. So anything that has an x squared, just put those together. Anything that has an x, put those together. Anything that doesn't have an x, put those together. So we get x squared plus 6x plus 9. So this right here is the x squared, or sorry, x plus 3 quantity squared. So we're going to substitute that in. And we'll take care of the distribution of the negative 3 and the 2 all in one shot. So distributing those, we have negative 3x squared minus 18x minus 27 plus 2x plus 6. And we just combine like terms. Negative 3x squared. We have negative 18x plus 2x, which gives us negative 16x. And then we have negative 27 plus 6, which gives us negative 21. And what happens if we plug in 0 into this expression here for x? That goes away. That goes away. We're left with just negative 21. And if x was equal to 0, then we're really finding out what is f of 3, which is what we did first and foremost up here. So this negative 21 right here is intimately tied together with this negative 21 right here. Now we get to deal with this expression here. I'm going to put a star on this side and a star on this side. This will be super important in calculus. Um, and we'll look at it a bunch of times this semester. But just like we did up here, we're going to have to foil some things and be careful about negatives and all that. So first, I'm just going to take f of x plus h. So f tells us to do negative 3 times something squared plus 2 times that something. And that is f of x plus h. Next, we have minus, and then just f of x. So we can take that expression right here, plug it in, and that's all divided by h. Now, for this first one, we plug x plus h into the parentheses. If you are a little shaky with foiling, I recommend pausing the video, trying to foil out the x plus h squared, and make sure you get exactly what I get. I'm just going to skip to the expanded version. We'll have time in class to talk about this, also talk about possibly faster ways of getting that aside from foiling. And what we'll do is we'll just distribute this negative through this expression so we don't have to worry about it later on. So we get plus 3x squared minus 2x, right, right from up here because we have negative f of x. And that's all over h. Distribute that negative 3 throughout. Distribute that 2.
and look at how nice that is. Right. Certain things will cancel out. This, this expression is designed to cancel out certain things if the function is nice enough. And this function that we're working with, f, is really nice. So notice that we have negative 3x squared and positive 3x squared. Those two knock each other out. We have plus 2x and minus 2x. Those two knock each other out. So everything we're going to be left with has an h in it. And this function, this expression right here, is designed to do that. Now, everything in the numerator has an h. We have a h in the denominator. And so let's try to cancel it. Just to recall how to cancel this, first we're going to factor out the h from each expression in the numerator. And now since we have an h in the denominator, right, we're dividing, and we have an h in the numerator, we have an h over h, those two knock each other out, and we're left with negative 6x minus 3h plus 2. Right. And in calculus, next semester or whenever you take it, you'll learn how to get rid of this h. And in this class, we'll learn about the geometric interpretation of this expression right here. All right, but for right now, we just need to get it down to the point where we get rid of the h in the denominator. So that's what we're left with. We're going to take a convention that the domain of a function is going to be the largest set of real numbers for which f of x is a real number. Whatever that means, we'll go into how to find domains, unless otherwise specified. So for example, if you're dealing with a function that uses time as an input, negative time doesn't make a whole lot of sense, and so your domain is going to be positive time values. Um, but for the general situation, let's talk about how to find domain. First and foremost, thinking back to elementary school, we can't divide by zero. So if the equation has a denominator, we need to exclude any numbers that give a zero in the denominator, right? Because you can't divide by zero. Things go haywire if you do. Second, if the equation has a radical of even index. So if you're looking at a square root, a fourth root, a sixth root, anything where it's a root that has an even number, we need to exclude any numbers that causes the expression inside the radical to be negative. Right? We cannot take the square root of a negative number. Right, and think about that. What does the square root function undo? Well, it undoes the squaring function. And if you take any number and square it, it's automatically positive. And so there's no way to ask, what do we square to give us a negative? We actually need to extend the types of numbers that we're looking at. And maybe you've heard this before, but you have to go into the imaginary world, imaginary numbers and I. And then we're going to develop more types of functions. And with those functions, there's going to be other rules on how to determine the domain. So for right now, can't divide by zero, can't have negatives under the square root.